I will start my presentation with a little video. And uh, just to give you some feel of what the tangible GIS is all about. And you can see there a three-dimensional scale model, which is flexible, and which is linked to geographic information system, and which runs a simulation. And in that simulation, we had water flowing through that road. So we can take a piece of that road out, rerun the simulation, and see what the consequences of changing that topography would be. Then we can decide that we will put a small check dam into the landscape, and now we want to see what will be the consequences of this new design. And you can see at the very beginning, it actually works. It slows down the water flow, but at some point, the water just gets all over, the, uh, all over the, the check dam. So with this design, what we are creating here is three-dimensional interface to our simulations and to the geographic information system that allows us to change the topography, to change the landscape, and see what the consequences would be. So now I will switch to my presentation, and uh, let's see. So, and let's look at what, what it is all about. So we have already seen here uh, sketches, sketching in two-dimensional space on two-dimensional touch table. Uh, can, but can we do this with 3D? Because our designs are really three-dimensional designs. So how do we do this in 3D? So the original idea actually came from MIT Media Lab and Sensible City Lab Laboratory, where they came up with this concept of illuminating clay, where you have a three-dimensional flexible surface that you can change, you can scan it, you can compute the analysis, and then project the results over the surface. So what we have done at NC State, we have taken this concept and we have hooked it to geographic information system, which opened many, many more possibilities for working with this system. So what we have here is the system is, uh, uh, has three-dimensional laser scanner. That's how you get the data into the GIS. It has projectors. That's how you project the data from the, uh, from the GIS onto the three-dimensional model. So what we can do, we can modify the model, then import it into GIS, we compute the DEM, run the simulation, and project the results. So you can generate very quickly many different scenarios. For example, we can add buildings, we can dig in the ponds, add dams, add roads, we can change the land surface processes. You can use different materials, put it onto the, on the surface to change the roughness, for example, uh, of the surface. And then what can you do with it? Once you have your design, you can really explore various aspects of your design. Everything that is available in your GIS, all of those analyses you can do with your new design. So you can compute simple analysis, such as slope and aspect. You can look at what kind of impact your buildings will have on view shed or line of sight. You can look at flow accumulation runoff. I, that's what I have shown in the, in the video. You can look at soil erosion and deposition. You can compute solar energy potential for different designs, different uh, configurations of landscape. So let's look at our little case study. This is real topography. Uh, uh, this is digital elevation model from LIDAR data. And you can see what kind of problems we have in that small watershed. We have sediment pollution. We have flooding. That was that road that was flooding, which I, which I have shown in the, in the first simulation. So here is among the many, many things that you can do. You can add the buildings so you can start asking the questions, what will happen with runoff if I put the buildings there? So the model is you put on the buildings, the model is scanned, you can compute the difference between the old and the new model, and you can assign different parameters to these buildings. So for example, here what we do in this part we generate 100% of the rainfall turns into runoff from the buildings. And everywhere else, only 10% of the rainfall turns into water flow. 
And that way, we can actually estimate how much are these buildings contributing to the overall runoff or amount of water here. Then we can rerun the scenario where we have 100% turning into runoff everywhere. So you can see the consequences of change, uh, changing this. Or you can explore, what if I put green, uh, green roof onto these buildings? What will be the consequence? And again, you are doing it by interacting with this three-dimensional environment and using the standard GIS tools. And the real fun that we have with this environment is people coming in and wanting to see it, want to see the demo. So one thing that I always ask them to do, you do your own design. So this is, so now I have a really nice gallery of, uh, of incredible creative approaches that different people with different backgrounds come in and try to design this landscape and try to explore different things. And they can look around the, the lab and pick up different materials, for example, to change the, uh, to change the surface properties. For example, here the, here one of the uh, one of the visitors put the CD-ROM on the on the uh, on the landscape, and uh, he just tried to wanted to see whether the laser scanner were, will work the same way as airborne la laser scanner works. So you don't get any response for very, from very shiny surfaces. So we created a lagoon out of it. So there are many many different approaches. I had one architect uh, that used. Just the just little pieces of paper putting there uh, for the buildings. So all kinds of things that people really start getting creative, and you can have not just one person working with it, but you can have two or three people playing around with it, and it's really really simple uh, to generate uh, to generate these different scenarios. So we have seen already that. And we are using this environment for many things. It's really a multi-purpose environment. We learn how to, uh, how to scan and how to work with the point clouds, because that's the laser scanner. But we also test algorithms for analysis and simulations. So you can see, for example, here we put uh, a very, very rough surface. Uh, uh, and you can see we, we can test whether our models can actually handle something like this. And, uh, and then, of course, the main purpose is to explore and demonstrate spatial impacts of landscape change, which you can generate very easily within this three-dimensional environment. That's it. Thank you.